I used to put in so many hours in here, like open gym, like being in here six hours. Remember how hot it was? Yeah, it was hot. <laughs> it was good in the wintertime, but it was hot in the summertime. It's crazy to be back in here. I'm like, this is where it all started jump roping, like just putting in that work. Like every single day I was here. City of Cleveland, the recreation department and the Cavaliers did some improvement. Cause yeah, because I'm, like, I'm like, it looked a little bit different yeah, from when I was in here. We first did it, it was, it was rough and ready. It was rough. But uh, as the center manager, uh, it's all we had, but it worked. It, it worked. worked every day. I grew up on 105 in St. Clair. Um, just pretty much the ghetto. And um, I didn't really even think about sports. My dad was a basketball player. Um, it wasn't like I was introduced by him, but it was just like, I was kind of around it and I was always much, much taller than everybody else. So I'm like in the sixth grade and I'm 5'11 and everybody at the school is like, you're not on the basketball team, you're not playing. I'm like, I don't want to play basketball. Like, I don't want those sweaty girls like touching me. And so then one day I was like, I'll just go try out or whatever. And the only reason I know that they picked me for the team is because I was tall. Like I completely sucked. And I think I was just so naive to all the like negative scrutiny that I had. I was so, I'm so blessed now that I was naive to that because it could have deterred me from playing because people were talking about me so bad. Like that big girl sucks. Like that big girl is trash, get her off the court. Like, I mean, I would throw the ball and it would ricochet off the backboard. Like that's how terrible I was. She uh, tried to dribble and she dribbled the ball way high up in the air. And all she would do was run and she was just happy. One day, um, a, a high school coach came to one of my games and he was there to recruit another player. And he just was like, who is that? You know, like, who is that? And I was like, just out there, just trying to learn, just, you know, just basically a student, just just real fresh, real raw. I didn't have really any bad habits, but I, he just could tell, like, I hadn't been worked with. And he saw Jantel just running up. She could run so fast, saw her running up and down the court. So he decided, he wanted to figure out who the mother was. Who is her mother? <laughs> So I said, I'm her mother. And he said, um, I want to train your daughter. She just was so athletic and could run, sprinting up and down the court at ease. She wasn't scoring the ball a lot, didn't have a lot of skill, but just her, her heart, her play, her conditioning. And he was like, I want to start working with her. I want to start working with her. Like, she can be good. She got good, great habits. She can run. That's all I need, that's all I need her to do. I'm like, it's crazy because these kids got it good because this floor is like brand new. When I was here, it was dead spots in the floor, a bunch of like, we had it with boys and stuff. It was slippery. Yeah. We also had the, uh, the ceiling had like in this area, in the corner area, had a little drip. Had a little, had a little, <laughs> had a little, so you had to watch out for a certain area when you was playing. Yes. But like I said before, uh, a little hazardous, but it worked. <laughs> a little hazardous, but it worked. Uh, Jantel actually learned uh, ball handling and skill through those uh, objects because like I say we had to know where to go and where not to go. <laughs> I just feel like everybody like mastered the floor like we knew where not to dribble like because we was like that's a dead spot like just avoid it and, right. and just keep playing it was fun. It's real. This is, yeah, this is the real. This is the way it's real. This is, I think this is the first That's your bench right there. This is the bench. I did. <laughs> I did the bar in here. Yeah, we just did the bar only because we were working. I wanted her to work on um, just formation and doing it properly. That's the one I hated right there. Yeah. That's what I was talking about, that incline bench. I know it's in the same spot. Wow, this is crazy. Yeah. This is it. Uh, this one you got the real, like the real weight. You yeah. know, like it's the real actual weight. <laughs> Like now you go to like some of them workout facilities and they can real weight. Like plastic. Yeah, like these are like the like real <laughs> dumbbell. Yeah, I just started working out with him, got completely better, and I just started to see like people like me, people think I'm good, like, and so I just was like, that's that makes that made me want to just like keep working and working and working. But she never missed a workout since seventh grade to twelfth. If I said it was at six in the morning, she was there. If I said it was eleven at night, she was there. So her, her commitment was the difference. Nobody in Cleveland could, could believe that was the same person from seventh grade to ninth. It was pretty, I mean, it was a pretty awesome journey because I started when I was 12, much later than what most people start. So um, I'm just happy that I started and I stuck with it.
Wow. Just being in here just gives me so many wonderful feelings. Like, I feel like I can smell the popcorn, how packed this gym used to be, and how people used to just be so hyped when I used to walk in here. All my peers, all my classmates used to just be so ready for the games that I was about to play because they knew I was about to ball out. Like, asking me, like, you about to have 18 and 10? You about to have 25 and 15? What you about to have tonight? I'm like, I'm about to get buckets. That's all you need to know. When Tell and I were growing up, um, honestly, she was very good at basketball, but I really didn't understand how good she was, if that makes sense. We had never had, like, a, I guess, a star in the family, so we didn't really understand how big it was. So people were coming to the games, we were like, oh, yeah, Tell's good, you know, she's good. Well, we didn't understand, like, how good she was. I just feel so warm when I'm here because I know all these seats were full with people just coming to watch me and my teammates play basketball. And it just gets me so hyped. And it just kind of gives you that motivation to keep going because people watch you, people want you to do good, people cheer for you. And that's that's what really gives me excitement here. Well, we had our own little cheering section and um, she went to Cleveland Central Catholic, so we had this really good cheer. Um, we had a, one of the parents that led, led the cheer. <laughs> His name was Ken. And here we go, let's go y'all. Oh, see, 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 see. So we did that because they was always winning, right? So it was like to get them pumped up, to get them winning, we would start doing that chant. The stories behind this championship banner is crazy. How we won that state championship that year was unbelievable. Like our bus broke down. Our coach was on the bus, like get dressed on the bus, like just to get to that gym, playing in a, in a regional final game, run off the bus into the gym. And here, it was like the exact same environment that was always here, it was in that regional championship gym. And our whole high school like erupted when we ran in. It was like, we were, the, we were on top of the world as a high school team. And I think that road and the way that we won that game, we came in, I mean, I think that game I had 30 points, 25 rebounds. Jantel probably could have averaged 40 a game, but she's such a unselfish player. She got her teammates involved and she probably averaged about 22 a game. But whenever we needed a bucket, you know, we called her name and, and she delivered for us. I just remember my coach saying, I was like, I'm so tired. It was the fourth quarter. I was like, I can't go no more. I was like, I'm done. Like, it was like three minutes left in the game. We're like neck and neck with the team. And he's like, Jantel, I need you to dig deep, go harder. I just need five more of your best minutes. And I was like, <laughs> Okay, and I just took a deep breath and I just went out there and I just balled out like, and we won, we won the regional cha uh, finals, went on to win the state championship and it will ever forever be a special place in my heart. I know when y'all came to the Sky Games this year, I know, I, I feel like mommy's voice is just like triggered in my head. She's like, hey, Tim. <laughs> At the top of the arena, and I turn and I'm like, hey. And like warming up. I can Wait hear, a minute. You know, I can call her. I can call her. I can call her. I can call her. No, I didn't say call Who said don't? No, somebody told me not to do that. Well, I, sometimes I do that. But I just said, damn. And then they start hollering too. Y'all, people need to see y'all at the Sky Games. That one time when he was drunk, I'm like, girl. Oh. You, Jazz was just like hacking me. I'm like, I cannot focus. I'm trying to play. Damn. But I had to see you with some more play. We were so happy. <laughs> Jazz is crazy though. She's like, girl, you better chew that gun. I'm like, I can't focus <laughs> with her. She was like. I feel like you always tell me when I'm chewing my phone. I'm like, girl, you was on that camera chewing that. <laughs> My mom was a very intricate part in my development as a basketball player. She, she just pushed me. Like I, I remember time, like one specific time where I was like, I don't want to go. I don't want to go to AAU. I don't want to run. I don't want to practice. And she said, Oh, you're going. A lot of times she didn't want to go because she was tired. Because you know when she played AAU, they would have two practices, and she was like, I already did one practice. I don't have to go to another practice. Like you're going. Like you invested. You said you wanted to do this, and you're gonna do it. You're gonna put all your time into it. And I was just like, I, I thank her for those moments, you know, because she was pushing me at times when I was like, I can give this up. I can just chill. But she saw such a bright future for me, and I think that that's important in, in kids' development. Just having parents that are like, I wasn't into sports, but I know that you got something special and so you're gonna go. But the thing is, is like, if you're not practicing, other people are. So other people are getting better and you won't get better. So that was my whole thing. You have to go because you want to be the best at what you're doing. So we just, you gotta go. The AAU was really expensive because Gentile was basically traveling every weekend. And that was just money, money, money. We did garage sales because we didn't have any money. And we did, we like my grandma had a bunch of church hats. 
that she wasn't with. And when she passed away, we just had them all left over. So I remember us putting them in our driveway and having a hat sale. And then I remember my mom bowled on the bowling league and she put my picture on the manila envelope and took it and was like, please just give me like donations for my daughter to go on this AAU trip. I really need her to go. I want her to go. And it would mean the world to her to go. So if you guys can just give donations um, and everybody just donated. It's really expensive. I mean, you have to feed them for five days. And a lot of times I wanted to take the trip with her. I mean, she was at every single tournament. She missed maybe like two AAU tournaments. She's just been there the whole way, just 100% in my corner, 100% supporting everything that I'm doing. It's like my dream became her life, you know? I didn't know about the All-American. I didn't know about women's basketball taking you that far in your life. I didn't know about it as being a career. So it was really amazing when she was being recruited. We had the excitement of all these college coaches, all these college coaches coming to the gym. Pat Summit, um, Geno Sinning people, Coach Foster, um, people from Texas, all these coaches coming to the high school games. It was very exciting. And then she finally, um, they chose Ohio State because Jazz and Jantel, we wanted them to be close to home. So it was good for me, Jazz, and Jantel so I can come to every game. We thought it was very important for us to go to college together because we're so close. Um, and we always talk about, we were brought in this world together. Obviously, we, we should be together, you know? <laughs> She's just so special to me. And it's the same as my mom and them, but it was different because she went to college with me. Like, she was the manager on my, on my college team. We traveled together. We made sure every college knew that we had to go to school together because we wanted to be together. When we met with Coach Foster, um, we felt that it was more at home. He really wanted to train Gentel to be a good post player. And he seemed like he was more concerned about her well-being. So she was ready for college. She stepped right in at Ohio State. And she's, you know, 6'4", strong, can shoot the three, can handle the ball. She's a great passer, uh, good defender, great rebounder. You know, it was just a matter of time. With the fifth pick in the 2011 WNBA draft, the Los Angeles Sparks select Jantel Lavender from The Ohio State University. And when her name got called, and you know, we heard people talking about her, it's the most exciting thing. I just, I couldn't believe it. If she went up there and she got drafted to LA, uh, it was really exciting. And just to see all the women there dressed up, excited about getting drafted, and don't want to be too far down the line while you just waiting too long, and we were lucky that Jantel was fine. <laughs> And she went to a good place for her from the beginning. It was a good place. Lavender. Chelsea Gray is out of midcourt celebrating by herself. This crowd Look loving this. it. <laughs> Behind her back and then whip it with the left. Since Carson has just three. She's done other things. I won a championship in 2016 with the Sparks and I had a major role with that too. I won six women that year, so I understood like coming off the bench, being impactful within a, uh, a starting five that was just phenomenal. Gray up the floor. Gray rumbles in, fading away. No, Agumake denied, another chance, it's good! Neka Agumake puts it on. Nobody knew Neka was gonna get a rebound put back. That was not a play that was drawn up. You can't draw up plays to win championships. You just have to stay disciplined. She does! That's it! The LA Sparks have slain the Mighty Lynx. They are your 2016 WNBA champions. I go to LA and I just get a phone call not to come to practice in LA because I just got traded. Then I talk to James, head coach. He's like, oh, we have media day tomorrow. So perfect, we'll see you tomorrow. I was like, wait, I can't go back home? <clears throat> and he was like, no, we, we really want you to be at media day, you know, so we can get you on all the film and all the, you know, all the media stuff for the games and stuff. I was like, I mean, uh, you can kind of do that with me after. Can I just go home? He was like, no, please come. So I come and media day was so long. I was like, I, I'm, I'm not even seeing straight. That's how tired I am. But the team was like, I knew Steph before. I knew Courtney. I knew Allie. They texted me like the most amazing messages that made me feel so warm and comforted. Like, we're so stoked that you're coming to the team. Like, we're, we can't believe that you got traded here. We're so excited. I, I love Allie and Courtney. Um, 
and Diamond wrote me and I knew Steph from before and they just all were just so excited. And I was like, this is a lot better than what I thought. I thought people were going to be catty and like, why is she coming to our team, you know? But it was a much smoother transition than what I thought because that was the fear I had. Like going to a new team is going to be crazy. The girls are going to hate me. But they embraced me so much. And I think that very, very quickly we all clicked. And we're headed to the skill challenge to support our girls. Alex in the three-point contest, Diamond in the skill challenge. We're so excited. Game balls today goes to, you know, Miss John Taylor. Taylor Taylor! Taylor. We hang out all the time, like outside of practice. We went places together. We wanted to have dinners at people's houses. We just always wanted to be together. And I feel like I like was the piece that was like, it fit right into the grooves of what they already had going on. This is for two from Lavender. Salute with Plum chasing him. Lavender had some space. Passed it, then finally took. Uh oh. Chantel Lavender hopping off the floor. I was devastated at first because I never had a major injury. And I was like, what am I gonna do like without basketball? It's like my life. I know me and my dad was watching the game and the only thing we saw was her hopping off the court. And we was like, oh my God, they're not saying any updates. What is going on? It's like she hopped off and nobody has said anything. What is going with, on with Tail? So I was calling Rob and I said, have you heard anything? She was like, no, I haven't heard anything. We just trying to figure out what is going on because nothing was said. And then we found out that she had actually broke her foot. I was running, I was mid stride. And it was just a freak accident, I feel like. And like I was saying, I feel like it was just like God sit, telling me to sit down because everybody already knows that I play 18 straight seasons and I'm like, I'm a goer, like I keep going, so. As soon as the WNBA is over, she's going overseas. And as soon as the overseas season is over, she's going right back to the WNBA. And I think that God really wanted her to slow down. Before the season started, I really was like, I need a break. I don't want to go play. I told LA I didn't want to play. LA did what they did with their cap space and I had to get traded and I'm like, oh my gosh, I gotta play. Like then it just ended up being such an awesome experience. It has brought so many other opportunities um, into play, especially like with the broadcasting opportunity, her spending time with um, family and friends, um, and then us having like different events here in Cleveland. I hate that it had to be too, because of an injury but always having her home is always a blast because we always get together, have a good time, have cookouts, just do a lot of different things. So her being home is just nice. We could chit chat. Let's go have lunch or let's go have breakfast. I love that. I really do. Downtown Chicago, Illinois, just three regular season home games left. The home to the Chicago Sky, Win Trust Arena down in the South Loop, and a pair of playoff teams duking it out tonight. Washington Mystics and your Chicago Sky. Lisa Byington, Patricia Babcock McGraw, and straight off of the injured reserve, Jantel Lavender. Welcome for joining us here tonight. Thank you. I'm super excited to be here. I figured if I can't play, I might as well come and talk about it. <laughs> Michael Alter asked me for a meeting, and I was like, okay, we can we can have a meeting. And I think I just threw it out there, like, um, I thought about broadcasting before. I was like, Maybe I can try to get into something with that. Since I am hurt, I can't go overseas. And he was like, well, um, what about doing a broadcast tomorrow? I was like, tomorrow? Like, I mean, I haven't, I, I, mean, I, was, I was like, I was, you know, I was just like discombobulated. Like, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to do the, scout, the broadcast tomorrow, you know? <laughs> so I go home, I'm like super anxious. I have like anxiety. I'm like, what am I gonna do? Like, you, you know, as we play in Washington, I know the players, but I'm like, I'm about to get just get thrown on camera and just have to talk about the game. He was like, yeah, like you got it. And Chantel? And with those easy opportunities come offensive rebounds for the Washington Mystics. I think Chicago has to do a better job of boxing out. I love Lisa and Patricia. Working with them was awesome, but they like spoon fed me into it. They were asking me questions, helping me along, like kind of just really just adding me in, asking me questions to, so that I could be a part of the broadcast, which was so awesome and I'm so thankful for them. And when you talk to James Wade, I said, Who's the player that helps this team try to turn the corner? And he pointed to you, Jan, telling the message that you sent the team on Thursday. It kind of just made me laugh because it was all caps and said, pick it up. <laughs> but, you know, like like Coach said, like she's our lead. She's definitely one of our leaders. And um, just her being vocal with us throughout, even when she wasn't traveling with us, she still texted us um, before the game and after the game. So she's very interactive. 
I told the team they had to pick it up. Playoff basketball and playoff games is about a sense of urgency night in and night out. And it's playing against the top eight teams that have, play, that have championship potential. You have to be ready. It's about big girls coming with toughness, intensity, grit, and an immense will to win every day, every night, every game. And I'll always tell them, like, it's possession by possession. Don't get wrapped up into the results. Don't, you gotta, you gotta, like, surrender results. You just have to do exactly what you're supposed to do at every, in every given moment, which is hard, and basketball's a game of mistakes, but do your best to do everything you're supposed to do with every possession. To me, it's better to just tell everybody to stay calm. Like when you get riled up and you get crazy, that's not a championship culture to me. Like coaches, of course. I'm just talking about as far as players. You need vets in the locker room that's like, hey, bring it down, bring it back. This is what we're supposed to do. We got away from the scout. Now bring it back. Start doing what you're supposed to do. And that's what it is, being able to hold each other accountable and knowing that I still love you. You know, I might yell at you. I might tell you you're not doing what you're supposed to do. But at the end, we're going to go have dinner and have a, a glass of wine. So that's what I just really try to instill in them and let them know, like, it's no set formula to win a championship. All I know is that it takes hard work, dedication, and discipline. Yeah, we are on our way to um, work out with my trainer. I grew up with him. And I um, got released to do my progression to run like about a week and a half ago, two weeks. And he's just kind of helping me kind of get back into like movements and doing like more explosive stuff towards that, like for basketball that emulates what I would do on the court and all within like trying to get my foot back warmed up to doing stuff. So I'm like gradually doing um, ankle mobility and stuff like that. But I've known him since we were kids and he was always like the little kid on, um, on the street. And like, we were always the older kids and he, we would speak to him and he would just look at us like, you guys got like girls got cooties and, just didn't want to talk to us and I mentioned that to him when I started working out with him and he's still kind of like introverted kind of quiet but you know he definitely tells me what to do like when I'm working out so it's always fun like working out with him his story is super cool and I love to give back to people from Cleveland and um just give them my business if I can especially if I know you like I just support everybody who's trying to be on the grind and um just do something for themselves. So I just, I mean, I support it. So that's why I go. I drive super far for my workout. Well, 25 minutes. And I got a membership I'm right down here at Planet Fit. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm trying to give back, you know. She comes in, works hard. You know, she, she willing to do whatever I take her to. You know, she's, she said, oh, he said, what we gotta do? We gotta do 10 reps or whatever, 10 rounds or whatever. I'm doing it. All right, she always asks me, why am I sweating so hard than everybody else? <laughs> you, you worried it. In the first phase is just pretty much injury prevention. Like I said, she's coming off this injury, so I wanna make sure that her mobility is right, you know, from the, the knees, the hips, the ankles, um, her flexibility, that whole thing. So that way, when she gets the basis of the functionality of these exercises, it will translate to better performance. Like I said, she's already been able to do amazing things on the court. So once her body moves better, like I want her to, no telling what might happen next season. Okay, we're gonna start off with stretching with Josh. He's gonna get y'all a little bit warm, show y'all some dynamic stuff that y'all should do before you play basketball. It's not necessarily all of this extra stretching and like sitting down, it's more like movement stuff, okay? So he gonna put y'all through that and then we gonna start, all right? Can we bring it in? Take, take, take the balls over there. Yeah, we gonna put the ball, we gonna put the balls over there. Like, let's say half fun on three, okay? Ready? One, two, three, half fun! I think when they see a WNBA player having a camp, it's like, oh my gosh, that's something I can aspire to. You can be a role model. You can be like, oh my gosh, she came from where we came from? I can do that? I can, yes, you can. And that's what I want them to see. Like, you can make it to the WNBA, you can, aspire to be in the WNBA if you put in the work. And that's why I'm having a camp to show them what it takes in order to, the initial work ethic in order to be able to make it as far as I did. Right give him a minute. It's a minute. It's a minute. Once I, but you know what I'm saying? Once I see people start getting on their phones, that's when it's time to go. I see people texting. It's like, oh, they ready. You ain't getting water no more. You ready. I want y'all to believe it because I'm sitting on Tisha's side. Like, you're about to hit you, hit it. You go into the and hit them, sit down. Yeah. Even if you grab them with that off, I'm sitting. 
I was really retaining what I was saying. And that's, that's what it's about. I think you gotta incorporate fun stuff with basketball because I still have fun when I play and I just wanna make sure y'all know what it takes plus have fun with it, you know? And a lot of times um, young girls have this tendency to think that because they play basketball, they have to be boyish. And I was always that person that was like so girly. And I'm like, you can be a woman, you can be feminine, you can wear nail polish, you can wear eyelashes if you want, you know? When they see me, they like, she play? I'm like, yeah, and I get buckets, you know? <laughs> so I'm just like, I just I just want them to know, like, you, you can be a woman and still play. So many stories in the WNBA relate to young girls and the problems that they have and some of the things that they deal with as girls, as women. And I think that to, to hear that from somebody who has had the same exact experiences just makes them feel like comforted, you know? And I, that's what I really want them to feel, to understand like, we all have stories, you know, we all have come from somewhere. And it's, uh, it's your choice to make it out, it's your choice to do better, it's your choice to change generational habits, you know?